Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the bald explorer, out on another walk, and I'm with the lovely Julia. Hello, lovely Julia. Hello, lovely Richard. Julia, we have a special investigation today. Yes. It's very exciting. Nobody will ever guess, unless they look behind us, of course. We're in Clayton, in East Sussex, up, well, just um, east of Clayton, up on the South Downs, and looming, looming in all its restored splendour, is Jill. She's a nice girl. She's rather beautiful. Shall we go meet her? Yes. Come on. And here she is. But better than that, Jill is no ordinary young lassie. She is a beautiful and wonderful windmill looked after by the Jack and Jill Windmill Society. That's correct. Goodness, well done, I got Bain. that right. <laughs> and as it happens, tinkering around at the, will, at the, at the mill side <laughs> is Paul Barber and your wonderful offspring. Yep. Let me see if I get this right. Joey yep. and Annabelle. Fantastic, lovely to meet you. And you very you. kindly agreed to give us a quick resume about Jill yep. and take us on a, a swift tour. Okay, certainly. Fantastic. We, yeah. we are, at the moment, behind some black ropes. Can we come well, around? Well, I think we should come out. Right. Both. Oh, there we go. Look at yeah. that. Easy for some, perhaps. Fantastic. <laughs> We're very excited, because we like windmills, don't we, oh, yes. Julia? A little, oh, bit yes, of, we do. little bit of exciting. And this is a precious and well-known one. It is. Yes, it's Jill of Jack and Jill at Clayton. And what we have here is unusual. We have the two main types of windmill left in the country today. We have the post mill and the town mill. And the reason that we have a post mill and a town mill is because windmills need to turn to face the wind. Yes. Because the wind blows from different directions. So with the post mill, the whole building rotates around a central post so it can point into the wind direction no matter whether it's blowing from north, south, east or west. At Jill, we have this wonderful contraption called the fantail which does it automatically so yes you'd often see this contraption on the back and think well what does that do is that doing some of its own milling but it's got its it's got its own special purpose it as has you're saying. indeed yes you've got to have wind on the front of the windmill yes. because that's what's going to turn your main sweeps and enable you to grind your corn right so if the windmill's not pointing into the wind you have a problem this fantail does this automatically for us. If the wind blows on either side of that, i.e. not on the front of a windmill, this fan starts to turn. There's a chain of gears down to these large wheels at the back. Let's just have a look at this and chain this of gears. Gosh, look at these. So this whole gearing system is pushed by wind power alone, yes. enough to turn all of that. All of that that is behind us. 23 tonnes of wooden windmill. 23 tonnes? Yep. That's a little bit that, immense. That is, that is incredible. But if I climb up there, you can literally turn it with your finger. It's that free to turn because wow. the last bit of the drive is a worm drive, which is tremendous gear ratios. And, and I'm guessing that Jill, when, when was she constructed? 1821. So towards the end of the construction of mills towards yeah so I'm, I, I, well i suppose what i'm leading up to is that this is the state of the art when you've got fan tails turning it you're not having to do it by hand to some extent to some yes extent. that is definitely state of the art for that period. winding yes right um, but jack is an improved windmill upon that in that it's a brick tower with just the cap turning at the top oh right oh, okay. so rather than a huge wooden construction with all the maintenance and you know yes. required for that just having a small cap turning on top of a brick tower is actually even better but right. more expensive but so. yes yes although in some ways you know this is a lot more romantic it is yes don't, don't tell everybody else <laughs> a lot more romantic because of its nature indeed you're going to let us go inside aren't you please do yes now there's no ordinary door in and there's no ordinary lift or well, there is a door but it's um it's a bit high off the ground. It is. Do There's you, a few steps. Yeah. So when you could, because just before we go in, you open this up to the public so the people can come in and appreciate our wonderful historic past. Yes. And understand how windmills work and learn a little bit about it. Yeah. This must be quite a daunting thing for some people climbing up. It is, but you'd be surprised. Most people do actually pluck up the courage and go up those steps. And 
most of them, I'm glad to say, also pluck up the courage to, to come get back down, down again. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, they'd be a very cramped windmill. Indeed. Are you uh, are you ready, Julia, to All go right. in? Yes, I thought you might be. Come on then, let's go up. So I recommend going up on the right-hand side. So you recommend going up on the right-hand side, and why is that? Well, it's just easier to get into the back door. Oh, oh yes, there. of course, because the door, the is, door is, is, is yes. Now, of course, I'm climbing up here. I've got a microphone in one hand and the gimbal in the other. So I am climbing up without holding on. You've got a friend at the back of you. <laughs> Behind me is the lovely Julia. Hello, Hi. lovely Julia. There you are. Making sure you don't fall. Oh, that's very good. Oops. And just that's before we you. disappear, we have this stunning view. So we're close to Clayton with the famous tunnel entrance. Yes. Um, and... We're looking south at the moment, purely because that's the way the, the wind it could be in any position, couldn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. The view out of this door changes yeah. from day to day. Yeah. And uh, and unfortunately, there's no there's no wind. But if there had have been wind, we'd it, be turning. You'd be turning. Yes. Wow. Isn't that that's incredible? Now it may be a bit dark, ladies and gentlemen, as you view this, and we'll we'll just get what we can. Tell us what part of the windmill we happen to be in now. Well, we're on the spout floor. The spout floor. The spout floor, and above our heads are the millstones. Right. And from the millstones, you get these spouts that come down, which oh, give the it? floor its name. And from these spouts, we can hang sacks, which collect the meal or flour from the stones once it's been ground. Oh, right. And we do mill here when we get the right wind, of course. Yes. <laughs> So and and do you know what happens to the flour? Do you do you we make bread it. from it? Yeah, we make bread or often cakes. Yes. Yeah. So wow, it's just we just do it for fun, and yeah. we do it a few times a year just to keep the mill running. Yeah. yeah. Gosh, how exciting! So this great big thing in front. If I come round here, so we just get an appreciation. There is this very large. Well, if I say what it is, it gives the game away. It's a post, isn't it? It's on, a post. Yes. On which the windmill is resting, and not just resting, turning. Indeed, yeah. If the wind was to pick up from either side, the whole building would turn around this post with a large bearing here and the mill would point back into the new wind now, direction. Were they originally made from a trunk of a tree? And it looks like it's in sections now and built up, but were they originally a great big um, oak? One single one trunk. One single trunk. Well observed, yes they were. This one, as you've quite rightly pointed out, is made up of four bits. Right. Um, and this mill was built in 1821 and there was probably a lack of timber of sufficient size right. because of various battles that had yes, happened with yes, ships at sea yes. at that time. So yes, this is made up of four pieces of timber and we have these metal hoops which hold it together as one piece. Gosh. Like a barrel. Isn't yeah. it? Yes. But, but even so, solid. you know, yeah. it's, it, I, just, I imagine some people do struggle to get their head together over the, over the idea that it is just balancing on there because at the moment everything seems very solid and very yeah. together and not wobbling or moving or, but i'm sure when it goes when it's going yes <laughs> it's a different you feeling get a sway here. yeah 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 absolutely when it's actually milling and using the power from the wind the whole building effectively comes alive you get a lot of noise from the millstones yes and obviously from the machinery yes and yes the whole building starts to sway and the further up you go in the mill the further away you are from the fulcrum the more that swaying is right pronounced. yeah and 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 i suppose that's that's the thing isn't it that people can come into mills and not that many mills now still operate right and you're walking through effectively a museum but this is because it is active and it's it, and it's a shame that i can't show the viewers that it's going because i'm sure the whole character Changes. must just yeah change yeah. and come to life and you really get that sense this is a a machine not a museum yes yeah absolutely yeah you're going to take us up the next set of steps Love to, yeah. these are even more vertical <laughs> aren't they look look at that straight through there and there there he goes julia i'll let you go first you can take the microphone yes. so we're on the next floor up so it's this the second floor well, we call it the stone floor the stone floor because this is where the stones are which do the actual milling right and we have two pairs here at Jill one pair at the front one pair at the back and the drive for these millstones is quite simply from this rear pair from the tail wheel driving the stone nut which drives down for the quant to the millstones in there right so this this might be a bit technical but 
if I've got this right, you've got the wind shaft, which the sweeps are attached to, yes. which is like your big um, axle on a car. Is yeah, that right? That's correct. Yes. And then it's, it's in effect turning these great big cogs, yes. which everything else is turning from. Yeah, that's right. More or less. That's the yeah. idiot's guide. And that was the idiot <laughs> <laughs> doing the talking. But yes, but, but of course, you know, we want you to come and actually see it and talk to these wonderful people because you'll get a far better and more accurate account of what goes on and an appreciation. So the whole purpose of the windmill, the turning of those sweeps, is to turn the millstones. It is. We've come down now and the sun is just setting but it's got this beautiful um, orange glow on Jill which is fantastic. Before we leave, you've worked hard, you and your team, your colleagues, your society, the Jack and Jill Windmill Society. Yeah. Um, so it would be unfair to, to leave without finding out a little bit about them and how difficult it is to restore a windmill and the work that you've done. Right, yes. So society was formed in 1978, 1979, and it was formed when the windmill was actually in danger of collapse because there was no funds available from the council. The council owned it. Um, so the society was formed and basically we restored it from a wreck to full working order that we find today. And, and in what sort of time? Um, it took about 10 years really right. to get it back to where we wanted it to. Um, and we also suffered the damage in the 1987 storm which so undid it set a lot you of our back. work. Yes, I'm yeah. not surprised, blimey. But yeah. it's, of course what we have now is the constant maintenance just to keep it in the condition that we find it today and actually operatable um, and also to open it on Sundays to you know interested people that come and pay us a visit we yes always so who, who makes up the society of the Jack and Jill windmills um, it's just people like you and me Richard right so, so people can sign up and just sort of say I'm really interested I'd like to get involved yeah and we would welcome them definitely yeah, yeah. oh so wow there's That's... always something to be done or so it seems and are you part of the Sussex Mills group Yes, as individuals, yes. As individuals, yeah. And, and, and so when do you open? When are you open to the public? Right, well, we're open from the end of May or May through to the end of September on Sunday afternoons from two till five, volunteers permitting, of course. And do you offer teas? And we do teas like and yeah. cakes, yeah. Fantastic, please, yeah. Oh, and that's it. Homemade entry by homemade, homemade cakes. Homemade, yeah. homemade cakes, uh, yeah. From the flour that you've turned. If we've got some flour, yeah, yeah, then we will use that to make our cakes. Yeah. Gosh, well, yeah, you know, cool. we've and got to come and on cool. one of those yeah. open days. Yeah, yeah, no, that sounds really good. Um, well, we wish you absolutely the best, and we'd like to come back and do a, a deeper bald explorer study of Jill because there's obviously a huge story, particularly what we haven't mentioned is the fact that it was moved up here. It wasn't built here. That's correct. Yeah. So we'll leave people wanting more and we will come back. But for now, Paul, Joey, Annabelle, and the lovely Julia, and Mr. Suggett, who's over there doing pictures, but we won't worry too much about him <laughs> in the sunset. Thank you so much. It's been an absolute joy. We've loved it immensely. And we highly recommend people come and visit. And you've got a website, we'll put the link on the description. Please do. Yeah. Until the next time, thanks very much, guys. Thank you very much. Bye thank for you, now. Thank bye you. bye. Thank you for now. Right. So there you are, Julia. Mm. Did you get a bag of flour on the way out? I thought you did. No, no, I couldn't, couldn't manage it. Oh, you've got a swag bag. Oh. <laughs>